So Paul, something I run into all the time when I'm talking with students and, and with everybody else is people saying, oh, well, that's you know, evolved, it's a product of natural selection, therefore it's normal, therefore mm -hmm. we should do it that way. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I try to talk about how low mood and depression can sometimes be useful, and they say, oh, well therefore it's normal, useful, and good, and we shouldn't interfere with it. Mm -hmm. Can you say more about how philosophers think about this whole issue? Philosophers have said some, some quite witty things about why that's a mistake. Uh, I think uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, the 19th century thinker, uh, says somewhere, uh, uh, you want to be like nature, infinitely wasteful, infinitely cruel, infinitely stupid. Um, and I mean, that's a challenge. Uh, he's responding to Darwin, of course, uh -huh. um, and saying in the light of Darwinism, maybe living according to nature doesn't look so nice. Uh -huh. Uh, but yes, I think it's, it's a well-recognized uh, view that's influenced a lot of philosophers, but is generally thought to be just one of those attractive, but uh, ultimately but mistaken ideas. But it misleads a lot of people. You had an example you were going to bring up. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in the days when people were still quarreling about things like giving women the vote or whether women should have equal rights in society, people would say, well, look, women have always got the raw end of the stick and been excluded from political power and you know, made to stay at home and look after the kids. So it must be natural. So it must be a great thing. You're messing with nature. Um, and I think you know, we changed it and nothing bad happened and it looks pretty good to us. Right. Mm. right. But there, would you say there's a deep tendency cognitively to think that something that is, especially if it's evolved, is normal, right, and good. Oh, absolutely, and there's a lot of research on that. Why, why do we think that way? Okay, um, I think because when we look at a living organism, we know that a living organism is not just a, you know, like a, um, you know, an electric kettle, five or six bits, a bunch of things stuck together. We think it's got something, a deep nature, something that makes it what it is, that came from its parents. No dog never turns into a cat, a cat never turns into a dog. There's this notion of essentialism. So and what is essentialism? Essentialism is the idea that some things, not everything, not, not kettles, but yes, people and dogs and cats, have something hidden which we can't observe, which guarantees that they're just that kind of thing. It makes them what they are. An essence. An essence, yeah. Um, we, ma nowadays, people often think, oh, that must be your genes. In the 19th century, they would have said it was your blood. Aristotle would have said it was the form, this immaterial soul infused into you from uh, your father. Well, it seems to me to be, I mean, if we're going to use words to describe cats versus dogs, mm -hmm. um, it seems intuitively obvious that they're fundamentally different. These cats, those are dogs, yeah. and they do have an essence. And, a, and, da and Darwin would have said, and go back far enough and you won't be able to see a difference. Mm. Uh, I think that's one of the basic insights of Darwinism is that uh, cats and dogs and people are not uh, completely different things. They all started in the same place. And even now, you know, every dog is very different from any other dog. Cats so this are is a very hard idea for many people to grasp. I don't think yeah. it fits naturally with our intuitive it thinking. It doesn't. Uh, it's very difficult for people to give up thinking that, that natural categories like animals, plants, um, human categories like people of different races have some kind of essence that makes them what they are. Fundamentally different. I think it's because of the way we use words. I mean, in order to communicate with each other, we need words, and words have to define categories, not dimensions. And so we make we divide up our world into chunks. I've always often wondered if, if bumblebees similarly divide up the world into chunks because I would they love, don't need words. I would love to do it. I I bet that's the kind of thing you could actually run oh, a, yeah. an experiment on chimps on, and I'd like to do it. Let's do it. I'm 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 inclined to the other view. I think that uh, that there there are many ways in which we've we have these shortcut ways of thinking, which are probably part of our evolutionary inheritance. And one of those shortcut ways of thinking, if you're hunt hunting and gathering, you don't worry about one species of bird evolving into another. That's not going to happen on any time scale you're interested in. The critical thing is to be able to recognize that all of those birds, if that one's good to eat, the next one's good to eat. If right. that one's uh, going to molt in March every year, it will be easier to catch. They're all going to molt in March and be easier to catch. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason we're essentialists Our is because it's kind of useful. generalizations, yeah. and generalizations are useful. It's useful. But they also stereotype the members And when of the you bird. do science, you have to, as we know, science is all about learning to think in strange and unintuitive ways, whether it's physics or whether it's biology. So doing science isn't natural, you're saying? I think science is a unique cultural achievement. People have been on, there have been people for 200,000 years and people have been smart and people have solved problems. And that doesn't, I, I think it's, it's almost insulting to take any intellectual achievement 
in a pre-modern society and say, oh look, they were doing science in their own primitive way. They were doing a lot of clever stuff, but science got invented a few hundred years ago and changed the world. Let's go on in just a minute and talk about what is science. Mm -hmm.